Hello, if you've been lucky enough to stumble across this video all about plumbing disasters, then great, we're gonna get down to all those beasts any minute, aren't we, Jack? Yes, we are. Think about the squirrels, the cats, the sheep. But anyway, before we do that, can you please all subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, and also pop over to our Facebook and Twitter. The links that are appearing in the cards at the moment are available throughout the whole video to click on at any time, so please don't forget to do so. Anyway, on to the plumbing disasters this week, and remember everyone, to hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice. Ah, winter's here again. Well, actually, it's not. It's, uh, it's March. This thing's crackling away like a little wee beast. Ah, so there we are. Just flip open that. The lovely sound and signs of a beautiful fire clottering away in the British sunshine. Just make sure that thing doesn't actually fall over. What's up? Hey, come here, come on. Good. So anyway, it's been a crazy little week going on in the world of plumber parts. We've done some videos, some proper instructional videos that we've filmed. We've got to get around to editing them and getting them back up. Because as you all know, that that is exactly what we do most of the time, instructional videos. So as I said, subscribe if you want more love there. If you're probably aware, if you're a plumber parts viewer of old, we are going to be at Installer Show this year. That's Installer 2016. It's at the Rico Arena in Coventry in May. Uh, you're going to be able to come over there, say hi, share a beer or whatever. There's loads of stuff going on as well. It's going to be really, really interesting. I just don't know why Jack always sits in front of the camera like that. It really is weird. Come on, look, we've got Frisbee here. Oh, great take from Jack out of camera. So I'm leaving a link for you to click on right now so you can register for that. Pop along, say hello. Just follow the instructions at installershow.com and you should be able to see all of what is going on. Before we continue, you might actually want to have a look at what we're doing in the shed because there's some really cool stuff we're going to be doing in there and hopefully you'll be able to follow us along on that over the next few weeks. Let's have a look. So yeah, the shed's a bit of a mess at the moment. We've been doing loads of work in here lately, but this is the big thing we're doing to do. We've got this Scrant Vortex ore boiler in here. We've got our editing suite and the main office for the hub of plumber parts is actually next door along there. So what we're gonna do is gonna get that grant vortex down there, just pop that in that corner there, pop a few holes through there and put three or four radiators in the actual main office area. They're gonna be supplied to us by our mates trade radiators and I'm gonna do a few videos just for them on their YouTube channel there, showing us fitting them and telling everyone about those. But then also out here on this wall behind you, I'm gonna be putting in a couple of radiators on the wall. Then we're gonna hang up an S plan and a Y plan system. Also gonna put a little F and E tank up there, but it's clear pipe work. I want clear see-through pipes so you can actually see the system filling up and venting and that sort of thing. I think that'd be really, really interesting for people to see. Anyway, let's pop back outside. So there you go, I hope you find all that very interesting. It's gonna be pretty cool to do. Why do you keep going over there, dog? Sit, sit. It's just never ending amusement from you, isn't it? So anyway, without further ado, let's pop and have a look at this week's plumbing disasters, photos and videos. Hold tight. James Morris found this catastrophe. Oh my God, James, this is just like the worst stuff I've ever seen. Big G doesn't even like it. I mean, why does people keep using all this sort of stuff all the time? I just don't know. Do you, George? Do you? Georgie? You're on the green screen. It's not going to work, is it, George, because of the shadow behind you? But who cares? You're so lovely, aren't you? This is that moment that someone said, I really like those taps. You know, those ones that are recessed that stick out the wall? I'll get them, but I'm not going to recess them. Look at that. Beautiful stuff there. I don't know, I don't get it. I mean, some people just sort of do stuff stupidly, don't they, George? Why do you keep going out of shock, G? You evil G. Oh yeah, wow, we're now back in the shed and look, we've got a little wee film set. We're doing a couple of films at the moment for trade radiators on their radiators, would you believe? But once these are actually in and done, because we're doing a little vid on dual fuel rads here, I'm actually going to do a video for you guys to show us piping these up because I think it'd be the perfect opportunity to show the different ways that you could pipe one of these rads up, really. Yeah, hopefully get a couple of videos for you there, just showing pipe work. Looked like you really enjoyed the videos last time that we did about pipe work in that pub, so there we go. So anyway, Jason Rod got called to this boiler. I mean, what's going on here? The flow and returns have been the wrong round for the whole of its life. Jason, I hope that boiler is working a lot better now, mate. You know what I'm saying, bruv? Flexi Friday fun. This is dreadful. Sent in by Jay Taylor. What's going on here, Jay? The most irritating thing about this photo is it does actually look like the pipes are central to the bottom of the radiator. So, you know, with a bit of faffing about, you probably could have sweated those two off, take that compression off, sweat off the other elbow, put a couple of straights on there, and at least bring it up in nice copper and make it look nice. If you've changed it over and you get a chance to go back to that job, then send us through the photo of the work you did. It'd be lovely to see. I've always been a great fan of lovely overhead, shower, you know, the, the big pan head showers. I love them. The rain effect they give you is great. 
Sometimes though, people go to the extremes of making one just like this person here. This photo was sent in by Katie Kelly and the person, as you can see, has used a piece of wire to wrap around a flexible uh, shower hose thing and then just attach a pan head to the top of it. I mean, I guess it gets the job done, but at the same time, it ain't exactly kosher, is it? Squiggly Mark Hallett, up and down and around. What is the person thinking here? I mean, just move over your outside tap so it's just above. Put a little soldered elbow on there as well so that's sticking up into your tap so it looks absolutely beautiful. Richard Lyons sent us through this photo that's just absolutely hideous. It's got so much wrong with it, I can't be bothered to describe it. We're going to wiggle around there with all them bits and bobs like that and then we're going to stuff a load of gunk on the bloody cold water main stock cock as well. So how many times, you guys, plumbers, you know, we've all been there millions of times you've got to go to a toilet that's got a leaking donut or somehow it's got some sort of leak behind it even if it's got a leak and it's got a bottom entry fill valve going into it you get called to the job thinking i'm gonna have a cup of coffee here i'm gonna lay my towel on the toilet or whatever so i can sit on it straddle it like the kids used to do in the programs dawson's creek and then i'm just gonna lift it off do all the work i need to do and that's great hmm. sorry guys it's not that easy and robbie williams pays testament to that look at this toilet you're never going to get to it, are you? It's just irritating the way people do this. What was there so high up next to the toilet that needed boxing in? I've got a feeling it was probably a little bit of four inch stink and a dergo. And if it was that, then where are the vents for it? Hmm? You know when you're running a like half cylinder, you're not quite getting it done right, you know? Or you feel like you've got some sort of virus, you know, and you just sort of feel a bit down. Well, this radiator has felt like that for the last 10 years. It's only got one bracket. I mean, what the hell is going on? One bracket holding that poor little beast up. Tiziano Pellegrino. Where is the cold water main coming in for this toilet? Oh, there, there it is. Cut just sticks in right at the top like that. Nah. I mean, I love their thinking. I mean, what's the point of doing proper pipe work? You know, just whack it on. Just take the lid off and bang it straight through like that. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy booze. But then also I noticed another thing as well. Look at the wall. They've built out the wall with a little bit of wood that's been like cheese blocked to the back of the toilet. Tom Kerr sent us over a photo of how not to first fix. I mean, they used some lovely expensive brackets, but then just did an awful job. Tony Kelly often wakes up at night and has dreams that he used to work on the Titanic. And um, that's not because he's a brilliant swimmer, which we all know he is. And also he's got a huge aversion to having ice in his gin and tonic because of obvious reasons. But it's also because he got called to work on this boiler here. I mean, that is old school. I mean, I used to do a lot of work for National Trust and work on the air boilers. And they used to be big oil burners with the twin nozzles on them as well. But also you'd swing the doors open and actually get in. And one time I was at a college and I kid you not, this college was just for girls. It was brilliant, it was like a uni college. Don't worry, they were old. You know what I mean? But the thing is, right, I went into this boiler and there were two backhoe adjustables in there. Perfect nick. And there they were just laying inside the boiler chamber. Also, if you watch our plumbing videos a lot, if you see that there's a dull pair of backhoe adjustables in any of the instructional videos we do, that's one of the pair. But anyway, Tony, one thing I love about this photo, it's not the absolute ancient boiler that you've got to work on there. It's also that tiny tub of fire cement. To be honest, mate, looking at that boiler, if you're resealing that, it looks like you're gonna need a couple of buckets of fire cement. Tony Knipe sent us through a photo. Is it Knipe or Nipe? Is it a silent K? Let us know, mate. Sent us through this lovely photo. You don't just foam in all your pipes and then just leave it like that and hope it's gonna be okay. The only way I could see foaming in pipes in the way that this guy's done in this video is if you're going to cut it all back, like get a nice sort of saw and cut it all back and then either dot and dab the wall or properly plaster the wall and get the plasterers in to do it. In that case, it's actually quite a good idea and I quite like it. If you've been back to that job tone, take a photo, mate, and send it over to us. I'd love to share that again with some people and it's great to have a little bit of comeback on these plumbing disasters photos if they do get sorted out by you guys. So yeah, there's lots of plumbing disasters and bad things going on there, but sometimes it's nice to actually look at a plumbing triumph a victory in the world of plumbing. You know, Horatio Nelson standing on the deck on October the 21st, 1805 at the Battle of Trafalgar. When he run up those flags, the uh, signal flags to the other ship, it didn't say England expects every man to do his duty. No, it said sometimes people like Daffid Yaxley do triumphant, victorious plumbing just like this. Wow. Look at that little header on there as well. 
all those little two port valves going off with a pump on the back of them that look like the Wilo Yonos Picos actually. Good stuff there, great work Daffid. If you do see this video mate, I know you're actually not a follower of Plumber Parts, I don't think, not yet. Send us over your address mate, definitely deserves a sticker man. That's absolutely fantastic work there. But Alan Goldsmith sent us this one through. Sometimes when you're building a house, I mean, I don't know, this one must have been in Jamaica or somewhere where they don't have any winter. Even though I've got a feeling it's like a tenement house somewhere or other in the north of England where we do get a lot of winter. In fact, you've probably got about 10 months of winter a year. But there we go. So this guy here decided that wherever he was going to build it, it doesn't matter. He's not insulating his pipes. Bang. Look at that. Look at, I mean, I actually started to have a look into this. So I was thinking, right, what other plumbing fails can we actually see along the way here? Number one, we've got that horrible, disgusting, what looks like a flue sticking out. Obviously, none of the pipes are done. And then if you actually look at the four inch stack that's going up, we've got a rubber coupling up there with the two Jubilee clips on it. I mean, that looks great. Different colored gray going into black. That looks great. And then on top of that, it looks like we've just got a bit of gnarly pipe work going on there with that inch and a half going into the top of that up twisted T. So thanks ever so much, Alan. That is a disgusting patch up. Oh yeah. Anyway, we got a few other photos from Alan Goldsmith as well. Sometimes when I'm fitting gutter in, I wonder what I'm gonna do. And if I'm like the person who I'm gonna show you in a minute, seems to have some sort of fearful aversion as to taking apart four inch soil stack, then this is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go round it like that. It's almost like a little bit of scale trick. Apart from in the tradition of scale trick, when you go around that bit, your cars are definitely going to fly off the track. This one made me laugh. Alan Goldsmith sent this one through as well. One of you guys on Facebook, I don't remember who it was, but described this picture as a plumbing orgy. And you can see why. Look at all those pipes trying to stuff themselves into one large four inch orifice. Have you ever in your life had a set of bath taps that you just love so much? You can't actually be away from them. You want them forever in your life. You don't ever want to get rid of them. It's like, this is so important to me as a human boy. Well, this person did here. This photo was sent in by Asadisha. I don't know if I'm saying your name right. I sincerely hope I am. I mean, what is going on with the world? It's disgusting to look at. It's horrible, c'est terrible. No one likes that at all. I need to direct the flu on my gas burner, okay? You know, easy job, innit? Just buy a proper flu diversion kit. Or if you like the guy in Colin Stewart's photo, you do this. You get yourself a toilet 90 degree pan connector. Bang, straight through the wall like that. Donovan Hastings sent us through this photo. Sometimes you just can't be bothered to notch the floor out. And if you're also as bad a plumber as the guy in this bloody photo, you also run your pipes along the top of the joist and then try and put the floorboards on top of them. But obviously when you do that, they're gonna rock a bit. Simple solution, isn't there? I suppose you could just notch it out properly. Don't run your pipes along that joist and then put it along through the void everything will be fine but no you could also do what this guy did just stamp on them sorted nothing wrong oh there's no leak but i tell you what the lady there has been moaning about a very very poor flow out of her hot taps ever since donovan hastings also followed this amazing picture up with another great photo i mean everyone in factories and businesses around the world and especially in the uk they see their cigarette break as a sacred right that must not be you know disturbed in any way well if you keep using this place as a cigarette butt box, then I'm afraid not only is your cigarette break going to one day be disturbed, but so are the internal organs of your body as they are thrown all over the other side in small little pieces. Guy, um, sometimes you go up in lofts and there's lots of mice about and they like going around, don't they? Pooing, weeing, talking to each other about world politics, whether we should be in or out of the EU, all that sort of stuff. Mice are much more intelligent than you think they are, but that doesn't mean they can swim. And then you see this mouse here who decided that he was going to go for a little bath. Didn't happen, did it? He couldn't get out. Thank you ever so much for sending us through this photo, Harry Lewis. I think I'd sit side saddle on that toilet just for your information. Right, so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed today's plumberparts.co.uk video with all the plumbing disasters that you guys have sent in. Like I said in last week's plumbing disasters video, we've had so many of them sent in to us over the last couple of weeks. We're dividing up the vast amount that you sent us into three little vids. And this is the second one. Jack, if you keep struggling, mate, I'm going to cut your treat supply down, young boy. So as I said, please do subscribe to our videos. It's lovely to see you guys enjoying all the stuff that we have. And as ever, it's you lot that make these videos happen. So please keep sending us over the photos and videos that you guys send over to us on a daily basis. As I said, you can click on the cards anytime throughout the video and do register to come and see us at Installer. It'd be great to see you guys there to say hello. And there's loads of stuff going on. But if you want more information on that, click on the card and go and have a look. Jack, come here. Come on, come here. There's one thing you've got to do. It's, what is it, Jack? He doesn't like chicken noises. I'm trying to make him bark. Jack?
All right. That's Jack for hold tight, I'm sure. <laughs> See you later, everyone. Hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice.